Hello and, um, welcome to my video. My name is Thomas Smiles, but most people online just call me Piano. Um, let me get this off the screen here. And I have decided to start making a series of videos in which I make an RPG Maker game in RPG Maker 2003. So for this, we're going to make a new project. You can come up here to your drop-down menu here, and you can open a new project here, or you can go right below that to new project. I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, but it is this first button right under the word project. I'm going to click that. It's going to open the, the file creator. What should be a good project name? Tube game. There you go. But, um, Let's actually come up with a title, a real title, something that is not just, um, I'm making a game and showing it on YouTube. Um, let's call it... Your request. Very simple. Could be absolutely anything. When you open a project, you're just going to be given a blank map. This blue is water. And access to tiles here. Now, these tiles are part of a package of graphics and sounds that come with this um, engine called the RTP or the runtime package. Now, originally I was going to do this whole thing in RTP, but I decided it would be better to, from the very start, show you how to incorporate other resources into your game. So, we come up here to the top bar. Um, from the menu, you can go to Tools and go to Resource Manager here. But an easier way would be if you see these buttons here, Zoom 1, Zoom 2, Zoom 3, 4, Zoom 8. Right next to those are the database, and right next to that is the Resource Manager. So, chipset is what we want right now. Import. Files that I'm going to be looking for a little bit towards the middle here. I've got a bunch of other stuff from other games also, but um, let's find. I'm not going to start with the world map because there are things about mapping that. are pretty important to show, so we're going to start with um, an exterior chip. Now when you open that, um, usually you're going to see a color blinking on, a background color blinking on and off. That is your transparency, um, but sometimes if there's more of another color, it will make that transparent instead, and um, you can see right here, select color to be transparent. Um, simply click on that background to make sure it's set, and it will be blinking like that, and okay. Now we have chip 01E exterior in our game. Now all of the graphics I'm going to be using for this are 
from a set called White Screw, and they are available on the White Screw store for absolutely free, and they are free to use. And you should ask permission if you're going to use them commercially. and set that and um, I'm going to put the relevant credit information for white screw store in the description and I will also that that crediting also includes the link so let's name our exterior town and you can see that I have um, selected the second tile set for that. Basic is your world map tile. We're not going to worry about that right now. But I'm going to go to Passability, and we're going to make sure everything is correctly set, which it's not going to be. Tiles are all going to be in different places. It's not going to be set exactly right, so let's make sure these are set. One, two, three. In order to make a tile impassable, you set it to X. In order to make it passable, you set it to Circle. In order to be able to pass under it, you set it to Star. These squares are pretty unique to RPG Maker 2000 and RPG Maker 2003. These squares let you set a ceiling. Now ceilings, you cannot pass under a ceiling, but you can pass under the topmost tile. I'll show you that in a bit. Now these are walls, let's set them to impassable. The edge of this plane should be set to impassable. It should be all impassable. Rock faces are impassable. Stairs, which this one right here is a stair, is passable. Everything else should be impassable. Now these are all going to be interesting here. I'm going to show you this in a minute. Any grass that we walk on should be passable, unless for some reason we're using it for something else, which happens sometimes. Stone floors. I never could decide what these are. I'm going to probably not going to use them anyway. These down here, these bottom pieces are crenellations. These here, this set, you see me making these impassable. Let's make them passable again. These are stairs going left and right. These are crates. Let's make the let's not make the tops of those crates passable. Okay, that looks good. Now let's go from the lower layer to the upper layer. Back of the roof should be set to star. All of these are overhead and should be set to star passability. These are wall tops. Let's set these to star passability. We use those for doors. I may or may not have to use those. Again. Again, back of the stone should be star passability. These edge rivers, in certain cases, uh, we'll set those to passable. Flying skeletons, no. Most of this looks good. Some of it doesn't. Let's make the benches and seats passable. Let's make the pictures not passable. Trees are always kind of messed up. The lone tree, we should make that mostly star passability with the trunk X passability. Ladder definitely should be passable. So should the rope.
and these are these stairs here they actually go with these stairs that's my phone so let's revisit the passability on these and what we're going to do is going to four directional passability we want to be able to go onto these tiles but we don't want to be able to go any further so we turn off the arrows here 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 and here we have a nice little u of impassibility around these tiles There's more up here, and um, let's fix those. I set those two. It's going to be easier to do it like this. There we go. Now, let's start mapping. Now, when making a map, it's pretty easy to overdo yourself. There is something in video game development called Large Map Syndrome. Now if we go down here to... I'm going to expand this a bit, bring it up to... You see the title here, Hero Quest, below here is the map. Right click on that and you can go to Map Properties. And here we see the size of the map is 100, 100 by 100. And that is the default size of a world map. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to reduce this map to the minimum size. We're going to switch it to our town tiles. There we go. Save. Now, I'm probably going to make this map larger as I go, but for the time being, I am going to focus on one structure here on this map. My god, my voice sounds awful. So let's just make this a grass flat. And let's make this the entrance to town. Let's get some stone paving. There we go. Nice too wide. this road go? We have a... We can either go straight or we can go to the side. I'm going to go side to side with this. What should be the first thing we see coming into town? Well, it should be a visitor center. Now, I am not going to make this map bland. So what's a good visitor center for a town? How about a town hall? Let's put this up on a bit of an incline here. So... So you've got a nice little cliff face here. Let's do the other side like this. Let's go down a little bit. Go up. Usually some options to what you can do with some of these. Don't see any here. Okay. 
and let's put the ground going up to there, and let's get some stairs. Let's get some nice dirt stairs. Now, do you see how that... Now, there we go. That is a very nice little incline, and it looks like something that you might see in a nice little RPG village. Now, do you see here how that simply ends at the stairs in kind of an ugly little... The auto tile ends right there. There's a way we can fix that and have it go right up to the stairs. So let's... In order to select tiles straight off the map instead of going over here, come here and you can right click on them so that you can do this. But how do we beat the auto tile? You come onto the tile you want and you hold shift and you keep it down. Right click and you can drag to grab as many tiles as you want. And then you can do this and then release the shift key press the shift key again and hold it to do that again or you could mess up but the beauty of it is is that as long as you don't change anything you can just go back to holding the shift key properly and fixing it like that again and this is called shift mapping And you see, instead of kind of pathetically ending in a grassy U, it goes straight into the stairs like we want. So, I think I'm going to want a little bit more room on my map, but let's build our building first. Town Hall is going to be a nice stone structure. Let's go ahead and go with the... Respectable size here. That's a good size. And yeah, I am going to want to make this map just a little bigger. So let's move down a bit. Go over here and right click and move down to shift. No. Sorry. Map properties. Let's make our map taller by about five. I'm not going to put the whole building on here, but I'm going to put enough of it on here. Now let's go down to shift. And shift down by five. There we go. This is that. And let's put a roof on this building. Okay. Oh, I should also mention that these are your drawing tools right up here. Your pen, your square, circle, and flood fill. That's all you really need here. So we're using... It's obvious what we're using here. God, my throat is starting to hurt. Let's go ahead and put that like that. Actually, yeah, let's make that taller. Let's make that front taller. Don't double right click, it'll auto shift you to the second layer, which you don't want that to happen. You can go to your second layer up with this top row, and um, you see the um, save and revert buttons there. And these three colored buttons, green, blue, and orange, will change your layers. This is the lower layer, which is the ground. 
blue is the top layer, and orange is the eventing layer. So let's go back to our top layer. going to be mapping here, and I'm going to show you the map as I make it, the whole map. If I come across anything technical that I should describe, do that. match. Oh no, they do. They look fine. So now let's grab ourselves a door. Let's put that there. Holy gate. And yeah, it's just a hole in the wall now, but um, the doors will actually go in the eventing layer. So, for the time being, let's head to our upper layer. Let's put a barrier for the town. And bushes seem like a nice little thing to add. Some prettier bushes. Let's get these fruit bushes. Let's add some other flora and fauna. Actually, I'm just gonna change my mind again. Let's just put a freaking fence right there. That will... That won't look so strange then. That's better. That does actually look better. Now, if you're like me, you're going to spend months wondering what this is. These are actually the crenellations for a castle. Just so you know, that's what they're for. Took me months to figure that out. The reason is... That's also what these are. And if you look, they're the same thing. So let's put something very official looking right here and right here. Let's add some little young trees. Set a grown tree. Do s as much as we could can to make our map look good. And our windows.
there. Now we've got ourselves a nice little town hall map. Let's put some symbols up here. I don't like that. Being double wide is, wide is kind of a pain in the butt. And put them up here. A nice imposing structure. I don't like the way that looks, let's just get rid of these. Come back here and just go all the way back with that. Ugh, thank you, that's better. <laughs> Let's put a bench out front here. Another one here. No ivy. I would imagine they clean the walls. Yeah, let's put a skeleton out there. No, no, let's not. <laughs> I mean, we could. Changed the whole feel of the map, wouldn't it? <laughs> Let's see here. Yeah, just a dead body right there next to the town hall as you enter the gate. That doesn't look foreboding at all. <laughs> ah, let's put in some notices up on this. Nice little notice there, a wanted poster here. That's looking more official. Realize my the right side of my roof is too tall. Let's fix that. You have to be careful with height, just just so you know. Height is an important thing to keep an eye on. Because this wall is only one tile taller than this one. Could make this roof taller. Actually, let's let's actually see that. Come here and make our roof. go back to the way our roof was. But you look and you see that what you would have to do is this. As you can see, it doesn't actually work so well, because, oh, we've actually got that here. Yeah, you can actually, oh, oh, I like that. That looks good, actually. Let's, yeah, let's, let's go with that. There's nothing at all wrong with that. Okay. That's something in mapping too. You change your mind. You change your mind about a lot of stuff. It's art. It is a work in progress. I just kind of wish there was a more defined line right here. makes sense either way. There we go. So, 
We've got this big empty hole here. I'm not going to use a gate for this. I'm just going to use double doors. But it has to go somewhere. So I could make a new map from here, but I would like it connected. I'm going to make a little entry hall here. And let's go to interior. Resource, man Ugh. Resource manager. Let's go to interior. By the way, J interior, J exterior is Japanese. The J is Japanese, so I'm not going to use that. Let's find a standard interior set. I suppose we could go with the castle interior, but I think that's kind of... Oh, yeah, it just goes right back up, doesn't it? Let's, let's see what the castle interior looks like. we are making an official building I would imagine the castle interior looking somewhat official no we'll go back up to the standard interiors here There's nothing that really looks like something like a desk or something. There's nothing that really looks... This all looks very comfortable. should not be passable. But the ground absolutely should be. So should the carpet. All the ground passable. Door entry should be passable. Wall should not be passable, neither should windows.
using transparency on the lower tile can be on the lower tiles can be problematic depending on what you're using it for. Windows you don't have too much of a problem with, but other things you will. Check our four-way passability here. Okay, that's all fine. Now for the upper layer. These stairs are very nice. Again, these here are upper walls that you can pass, that are used for passing under for making doors and stuff. Very useful. Prison bars are triple high. You should be able to pass under those upper two bars. Don't want to step on coffee cups or swords. Or teapots. Don't walk on pictures, it's not nice. Letters should be passable always. Beds, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking of games like some of the Final Fantasies where when you go to bed you actually can walk, see the characters walk into the beds and go to sleep, but it's more trouble than it's worth, actually. Now the bottom tiles on cabinets should be passable because, if you can see, cabinets are halfway off the bottom tile and you want to be able to walk up to them. Backs of tables should be star passability. Chairs, up to you, but I like to make them passable. Stools and benches the same. Yeah. Plants and statues should not be passable. The bottom should be impassable and the top should be star passability. So, there we go. Back to map property. It, oh, we've already done that. Now, let's give ourselves a nice official looking tile floor. Let's go to flood fill. No, square fill. I'm going to overfill that a bit. When I say overfill, I mean this floor is not going to go up this high. Making your walls two tiles high for this game. Actually, let's put the ceiling up first. Phone started ringing at this point. That's the reason for the long pause. Very sorry about that.
So what we are actually going to do, let's actually move these in a bit. So we have more space to the side. As you can see, on a 2D map, there's only two directions for entrances to really go, so the way I generally do entrances to the side is this. Just like that. And you can see that is a path to the left and to the right. And um, we're not going to do anything with those today. But what we are going to do is we are going to make our help desk. tile I found the desk at the bottom here but we need the back and the back is the table here they match they absolutely match and the table back is also the desk back so because we've decided to make our interior rooms two tiles high that means we're not going to have a use for these upper walls here so now we have our city hall and we have a interior for the city hall to go into so, let's go back to database and let's go to char set characters. That's where you're going to need the doors. So we need to go all the way to the bottom of this object. The nice stone doors. Those are gates. There we go. So, let's go up to our eventing layer. Right click and create event. We're going to go here and we are going to grab this nice stone door. Now you can see the handle here is on the left, so this is the door we're going to put on the right side. Now we could just put a transfer event going in there, and I think most people doing this would just show you making a transfer event. But no, we are going to go all in here. going to fully animate this door opening. So we're going to go here under contents, double click on the blue, and you open this event command page. Go to the second tab and go down here to set move route. Make sure you're set to the right event. event. No. Okay. 
actually this event would probably be the best way to make this, so let's go ahead and do that anyway. Turn right. Wait 0.3 seconds. goes a little bit too fast, four goes a little bit too slow, three isn't exactly just right, but it's better than two or four. Another move route, player, through on, move up, through off. And the reason we're turning through on is because we want the player to be able to move into the door. And if you don't turn through on, it's going to freeze up the game. Through off, because if you don't turn through off, you're just going to continue to be able to walk through everything and nothing can stop you. You will literally be God walking on the walls, on the ceiling, over other characters, over the desk. You're... yeah, no. It's going to make the game generally a mess, so... Actually, let's put that big... there too, so... Turn right, wait 0.3 seconds, Turn up, wait 0.3 seconds. Turn left, 0.3 seconds, and all three of those move events should be this event, set to this event. The fourth move event is the player, and you want to move the player up. And finally, wait for all movement. But where does it go? Once again on the second tab, transfer player to the interior on the right side since we're doing the right door my goodness i called that the left door the whole time <laughs> sorry it's the right door oh good grief so how do we do the next door well that's simple Make sure the door is still highlighted, which it should be. Control C. Click right next to it. Control V. Go in. Switch to the other door. Transfer player. Make sure he's on the left side. Change the name. There's the left door. I think I was confused about the position of the doorknob. Let's make our player. I still am not going to use RTP. I'm going to go back to Charset and let's find the girl I used for my alchemist in another game. So we're looking for Magi. There she is. And go into database. You should already know where that is from all the times I've opened up tile set. Go to the actor's tile. Zack is not going to be her name. Let's go with Lydia. And since we've 
gone through this trouble, let's just go ahead and grab her face chip. Wrong one. Down to faces. Her starting weapon. Let's set <laughs> it's, it's still club. Why? I'll worry about it later. Now we see down here that we also have a third graphic. And that is the Battler. And White Screw Store makes graphics for RPG Maker 2000, and that does not have character battlers for the playable characters, so we're going to have to worry about that later. I think I made a bat battler for her, but I'm not sure. I don't think I did. So, let's go ahead and apply. Right click on any walkable area of the map and set player starting position. There's something else I forgot to do with these doors. The trigger action, right here. Set it to player touch. And you know what? Something else I forgot to do. Let's give it some sound. Let's make sure we can leave. And it's the same process as creating the door, except you don't have to make the door or animate anything. You can just create a transfer where the player just leaves. And just because it can avoid trouble, let's go back here. We add a hide screen command to before the player transfer and then add a show screen command to the end. And um, you don't have to do that, but later in development it can cause problems for you depending on how you're, you've handled certain things. So just go ahead and add the hide and show screens just so you don't run into trouble later on. There we go. Save, and let's see how this looks. Oh, the character can walk around just fine. We've set passability right on everything, I think. Yep. Perfect. Can't walk on any walls, can't walk on the bush. It's a little strange, might make that un impassable. Graphic error, I forgot this piece here. That's fine. It's not the end of the world. Let's check our device. go. That should be pretty much everything you need to know about, about well, mapping. Down. And 
With what I've just shown you, you can pretty much see how to make a map in general. Houses, dungeons, they all follow the same rules. And um, let me actually go over here and fix this real quick. That's better. Go into tiles and the town. We're going to make this one impassable. The corner is impassable. Because I don't mind her going a little bit off the edge on the side and front tiles, but um, it's actually it actually looks strange on the corners, so we will change those. And that's it. I hope this was useful for you. This covered the use of auto tiles with the um, walkways. There are animated auto tiles that are basically water. They work exactly the same way, except they're animated. You will see the water moving. There was one thing that I, one thing that I forgot to discuss, and that was map sizes. I did briefly mention it, um, but I didn't elaborate, and um, basically I showed you a good size for making a map with a single building on it. We've got a town here. Um, let's improve this a little bit, put that like that, and um, change those stairs to stone stairs. By the way, if you, you got a shift map whenever you're doing that. So you know how to get graphics into the system now. And um, you understand that the size of the map is important. If the map gets too big, it can start to get too empty. And this is what we call large map syndrome. And let's save this, and this is all I've got for you today. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed it!